What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vermont Scale Customs. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Welcome to Coffee and Crawlers, Episode 6. So, um, I have back in the spotlight, again, the Dementor V2. And the reason is, I've done some work on it uh, a lot last night and into today. And the problem was, let's see if I can find it laying around here somewhere. Oh, sweet, the refrigerator kicks on the second I start filming a video, that's perfect. Um, which is right here, this is my fridge. So anyway, um, the problem was is that I rolled my brand new, no expense spared, beloved toy uh, that took me three weeks to build after searching out all the parts and pieces and all that good stuff and waiting for things to arrive and getting it all put together. I rolled it twice off of the indoor course last weekend and unfortunately not just cracked the skid like more or less shattered the skid in like two like four different pieces i think it was that's why i'm kind of still half looking around to see if i can see it there it is and um i think i discovered that this happened on like monday no sunday night and um because i've already talked to chad colker the owner of hard park um, kind of behind the scenes a couple times uh, via Facebook chat for a couple different things. Um, I just reached out to him and said, hey man, I messed up. I was just wondering how much it would cost to get a skid. I rolled this thing off my course, you know, broke it. Um, you know, what's that going to cost me to re replace that? And he told me that he was down at Ultimate Scale Truck Expo down in Florida for the week. And no, no problem at all. I got plenty of other stuff I could be working on and, and get going with. So I'm, you know, more than happy to wait and uh, we'll go ahead and order one whenever he gets back. So I woke up Tuesday morning and I swear it was like five o'clock in the morning, something like that. Maybe not, I don't know, it's maybe a little bit later. I posted something about it maybe like a little bit later um, on Facebook page on like the M uh, 24MOA and Pro Shafty page. At any rate, like I received a notification that a shipment um, was being processed uh, from Hard Park and that uh, it was going out like that afternoon or something like that. Well, anyway, it a brand new skid showed up yesterday. Totally no questions asked. Um, free of charge. He just replaced it, you know, and I, I, I can't thank him enough, you know, because that's just awesome customer service, but then you know, to be able to have this thing back up and running um, as quickly, you know, without having to go through the whole process of placing the order or anything like that. He just go ahead and just sent it. Just no questions asked. Um, that really just goes beyond certain levels of, you know, like when you invest, you know, your hard earned money into something that you really like a lot. And I believe me, I love this thing. This is definitely one of my my favorite machines I think I've ever built. Um, it's just so fun. And I love the way it runs, love the way it looks, and just everything about it. It, it crawls like no other. Um, <clears throat> it's a very, very capable machine. And so anyway, uh, when something goes wrong with it and you wanna, you know, just, <laughs> just break down into tears, oh no, I just broke my new toy. You know, people understand that, that, that that you want to have that thing back up and running, you know? Um, and I think that he understands too, that, that we help keep him going. And so, um, it, it is, it's just awesome. So thanks again, Chad. And thanks to you guys. Hopefully you guys are going to reach out to hard park for some of your next builds and check out some of the chassis that he's got available. You think he's got at least like half a dozen of them that are available on a couple of custom bodies. He's got frame links. He's got, uh, some of the most amazing, wheels that you can put together that I've seen yet and he's got options for days on putting some custom stuff together so if you have any interest at all in making you know just just some really nice one-of-a-kind um, 24 scale based stuff stop by Hard Park RC and and see what they've got and go ahead and place an order and uh, tell Chad that Mark sent you from uh, from Oscale Custom so at any rate um, I spent, like I said, some time this morning on this, getting it back together. I got new diff covers for it. They arrived last week and I was busy uh, just running it and discovered very quickly, I, I think even just shortly after getting them on, 
Um, and what had happened was it landed pretty much, I think, upside down. And so it shattered everything across from these points in here, like anywhere where there may have been stress from the front links, because I believe that that landed and just hit downward uh, the most and hardest. And so, um, yeah, I spent a couple of hours getting this all put back together. I decided to, you know, just kind of rearrange things a little bit up front. I had originally the battery on the side and everything kind of swapped and now it's very much easier to, to access power switches right there with, without anything in the way. Um, nothing is obstructing the rotation of the outrunner or anything like that. Not that it was before. Uh, nothing's making any contact with uh, the pinion inside. It's, it's a super clean build as far as I'm concerned. Right now, everything is really, really just, I think just kind of dialed in really the, as best as I can get it. Another thing that I did um, was before I very blindly, very stupidly had the servo wire running up and over the top and everything kind of bundled up and bunched in and just kind of squeezed underneath and it just looked awful. Um, and so I decided to, um, you know, do what I've done for, you know, most of my other rigs is just run that wire down onto the top, you know, frame link. And then I also shortened it too. I cut about six inches of uh, servo wire away and managed to shorten that quite a bit. So it just pokes out to just enough and meets up too with the, uh, the drive wire for the motor and everything for, you know, the ESC. So, um, did some just real light cable twisting on stuff just to make sure that that's all um, solid and fairly <clears throat> well protected, you know, for any rollovers or anything like that. Obviously, the battery wire is the most exposed right here, but I'm really not too concerned uh, about that having any major issues. Uh, I tried this with the antenna wire, which is something I'd never done before. I had kind of like coiled, I think, on the last version. Um, about three times through here and then just kind of like stuff the rest of it inside and decided to just kind of like finish the whole thing so I wrapped it all the way through wrapped it around the pillar and then ran it through looped it back and, and tucked it in to make a nice little knot so I thought that kind of finished things out there quite a bit sort of proud of that um little little detail things like that that just sort of I don't know kind of touched things off a little bit uh so now that I'm up close with this too, I can kind of give you a little bit more of an idea about how the suspension works on this. I've had some questions on the 124 MOA Pro Shafty page at, at Facebook about like what I ended up doing, I think, with uh, the coils in the back. And I think I had a couple of questions here too about what I mean by bump coil. And so the in, these are internal sprung shocks, meaning that there are the tiniest little springs. Let's see if I can kind of pull up something that's laying over here and give you an idea. Um, I think the camera's probably focused against this. You can see now the, the springs that are inside of these um, shock bodies are actually smaller than this, in fact. And what I've done was cut about maybe two wraps of coil, a wrap and a half, one to two on, on everything. And that sits at the very top side. And I've also put the factory side towards uh, the piston. So that way, if in fact anything does move, the cut end sits a little bit closer towards the top of the shock body. And, uh, you know, you try and make your cuts as clean as possible and, you know, reround the, you know, the spring wire back in a little bit so there's not some flared piece like sticking out that's gonna sit against the inside of the shock barrel and not move. But what, two, you know, little wraps of coil will end up doing for you, <clears throat> excuse me, is, you know, here's at full extension, but here's at, at full droop, you know, um, this is normal ride height. And then if you press on it, I've probably got about a quarter to three eighths of an inch, call it, you know, a centimeter of, of downward travel in this before it's fully bottomed out on the rears. The fronts do not bottom out. Um, and that's because it's actually limited by uh, the front links. And the front links will keep that from, from bottoming out. However, in full articulation, I do get almost total compression on that. They do close, close up pretty well. And that's because the tray uh, doesn't become too much of an issue with the upper links in the front. So, um, okay, so that's kind of a little bit more of a focus on what I mean by that. And that's kind of like a 
little bit more of a, an in-depth how I did what this is doing sort of kind of organic feel. I have no intention whatsoever of changing how this, the angle of anything on this. I absolutely love the way it runs. I really like the way it articulates. It's got, I think I explained in the last video, it's probably got close to like, I want to say maybe even 70 to 75 on the rear and almost 80, I think, on the front. So even though it's a little probably excessive for the average crawler, these little SCX-24s, every once in a while, I find that it uses it a lot. Um, and it's really come in handy. The diff covers, um, the jury is still out on whether or not these end up having just too much material down here and hook on everything. The, the test runs I've made so far within the last, you know, 24 hours of running this thing, I haven't really run it that much today. Um, but if it ends up being a problem, you know, uh, that's not going to be an issue to just, you know, file some of these corners down just a little bit. I was really psyched on these because these weigh 13 grams a piece and that's almost a half ounce. That's a gram shy of, an, uh, of a half ounce. And I think even with the screws on there, it probably puts you right up at a half ounce, maybe even more. And two of those steel wheel weights, wherever they may be, um, with those at seven grams a piece, that's 14 ounces. So with these at 13 and change, 13.65, I think they were. And then you add six screws onto that, that's definitely gonna put that up over 14 grams. So I took those two wheel weights off, put these on, and I think it clearly looks obviously so much better um, and don't have any additional weight hanging off. And the front, I will say that it did require me to have to relocate the servo. I was kind of psyched with it being back a little bit further, but this particular servo mount has uh, three different positions that you can mount in terms of keeping this thing, uh, whichever position you want it to be in. So I had to move it from the middle all the way forward. No big deal again. So um, it kind of wraps up this one. I'm going to set this off to the side and I've cut to a clip and I will show you uh, the next one and what I've got going on with that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so part two of this. So, um, well, I kind of completely went against everything I think I said in the last video um, and tore this thing down. A um, couple of the reasons being that I, I really wanted this to be what it is now. And um, after giving it yet another try, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. And so it's basically gonna stay this way at this point. Um, and this is just incredibly heavy too. I had this so weighted down, which is good. Uh, but the reason I had it weighted down is that it just kept unloading and I couldn't get that chassis to stay put. And so this one seems to be uh, just vastly different and the way I've got it set up right now I think I'd, I like. I am going to do a little bit more work with the suspension. I had originally put the um, yeah racing shocks on uh, with the SCX24 factory ball and socket ends. I had taken the springs out of the inside of these and was just using SCX24 factory springs. Um, lovely bit of compression and travel, uh, something like 14 millimeters or something like that. And I really liked this setup a lot, um, but it just was kind of limiting. So I decided to put these back on. And while it doesn't open up a whole ton of extra travel, it does open up more travel. So um, also too with the front, since I do have pretty good steering angle with this, um, kind of was running into a little bit of an issue with the preload rings uh, coming out of adjustment. So what I did was back them all the way off and then took my pliers and just kind of squeezed them a little bit uh, to kind of make them a little out of round, not, not bend them, but just enough to sort of make them out of round to give them some resistance. Uh, Cause I don't want to glue them. I want to be able to adjust them. So with that slight oval shape, um, it'll still bite onto the thread and you'll be able to thread that and no, they won't turn whenever just a wheel comes in contact. It actually takes a good amount of force to be able to get those to turn. Um, it's kind of a generic way of getting it done, but it's done. It works. Um, 
So a little bit more, this ended up being the, the NW Chassis Works Pitbull that I ordered a few weeks ago, probably going on maybe a month ago now. It's been sitting around for quite a while. Um, it got built before and I just couldn't get it to articulate. And I think I even built it with these shocks and everything as it sits. And I just couldn't get it to run right. I didn't really <clears throat> approach it the way I should have with the mindset that I think I should have. Um, and I decided to go at it one more time and I'm very pleased that I did. I also vented um, the scramblers. I was gonna vent the wheels, but I decided to vent the scramblers instead. Um, I think I kind of like the vented tire a little bit more than I like a vented wheel just because it, it, it just rebounds that much quicker. So uh, what else did I do to this thing? Yes, it's running a gigantic 600 uh, milliamp 7.4, just regular 2S on factory electronics. Um, I may get something smaller. I do have a couple of Palm Beach bots, um, 3S batteries kicking around, uh, but I don't think that uh, factory uh, SEX24 electronics likes 3S for very long. Um, and since this is running a Holmes Hobbies 55 turn, I'm totally very happy with how it runs right now. It's kind of got a little bit more brute strength uh, and a whole just bunch of top end. Uh, and so you have to be very kind of careful about, you know, how much, you know, low and low speed you want to use uh, because it's kind of on a very harsh dividing line. So it would be nice to maybe kind of tame and control that a little bit more. And that's just in second gear. I don't really ever run this in third. And in first gear, you can't, you just can't get the wheel speed that you need in certain situations. So second gear is where I really like to run this. And so um, probably just try and dial some things in in some way or another and if i remember correctly i think i have this overdriven like 13 or 14 percent up front it's running deluxe shaft um and what else this was like the only chassis that i've run into so far that has a really nice angled uh attack on the on the skid um and also too you might think that i would want to be running my links in the opposite direction however such is not the case on this one ran into a problem where i needed to file a bunch of material away from this particular spot right in here where the drive shafts uh when it's spinning it's got just about two sheets of paper of of space now to be able to move without running and make any contact there even at like its deepest articulation so fixed that problem um I don't think I'm going to go for full low CG on this, even though uh, I might try it at some point in time. And the reason being, the wheelbase on this is long enough. Um, I think it clocks in at around, it's got to be close to like 172, 173. So the problem is, is that with that, with that angle of attack on the skid, um, when you hear that wind howling, it is just super, I probably would have gone outside to run uh, trucks today, but yeah, because it's like 40 some degrees, but the wind is just horrendous. Uh, and it's pretty chilly wind too. So, uh, but anyway, back to what I was saying, this has got just kind of, you know, just a little bit more of a ridge here that I have found kind of gets hung up in some spots. And so I don't really want to pronounce that too much more. I kind of like how the front shocks are kind of running and getting that up and over things now. I had this kind of sitting a little bit lower previously, and now I have it sitting a little higher up and it really seems to have helped a lot. It kind of gets those wheels down and gets that center up and over a couple objects a little bit easier and maybe not everything, but just enough to make a difference that, like I said, I'm going to keep it that way for a while. The other thing I would like to do is get a, a taller rear link riser and get those rear links uh, pointed up in the air a little bit more. That way I can kind of kind of start doing a little bit more uh, and, and, and clocking the rear end a little bit. Um, front end, I'm not really sure. I'm going to leave it as it is right now. And the reason is that I am running two, like it's a mixed set basically of, it's like the C10 bottoms mixed with like the JLU uppers or something or JLU lowers or something like that. So it's a complete non-standard set. Um, and I can get it to run completely, you know, vertical in about this position. There's a little bit of forward caster in this position, but still not too much. And also, if you really look at what kind of angle we're looking at, 
it's almost vertical as it sits. So once you kick it back, it gives you a little bit of a rear angle. I actually kind of wish the wheels were off so you could sort of see that. I really like this wheel and tire setup. I re-added the Triel, um, the plus five millimeter uh, and plus 12 millimeter, or excuse me, plus 12 gram uh, wheel weights on this. I think that helped a ton as well. It really keeps this thing planted. Um, that's it. So I hope you like my new mat for my piece of cardboard that has a bunch of spray paint on it. And I decided to use the carousel this time around so you guys could watch me spin trucks. Isn't that fun? Um, let's bring the old hard part back on here. Let's bring both of them back on here. Look at that. So, yeah, this gang right here is getting kind of built up for some, some summertime fun. I cannot wait to get back to the Cascades with these two and see what they can pull off. I cannot wait to get this thing back to the, or actually not back to the Cascades, it's never been to the Cascades, but get this thing to the Cascades, get them all there and check them all out and see what they can do. Build a little like cheerleader pyramid with your crawlers. Th things are getting serious here, folks. I'm not kidding you. Um, and I'm really, really glad that I've decided to kind of push my interest in this direction. And then it's because way back when SCX 24s totally took off. Obviously I had quite a few videos that, that kind of pertained to customizing them, but I sort of uh, kind of fell to the wayside and let some other folks kind of take the spotlight with that. And I wasn't trying to be, you know, the latest and greatest channel. And it's not like I'm trying to be the latest and greatest channel with these things, but I will say that I am very enthusiastic about the direction that these rigs are going in. There seems to be a very small niche part of uh, the industry that is really carrying things in a direction that I am very, very interested in seeing this go. So, you know, with, with all things considered, I'm more than happy to put a ton of extra time and effort into building and customizing some of these because I just, I love the way they perform. They do what I think they should be able to do, you know, and I think actually these kind of outperform some of the even larger scale stuff now just because. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the future of what this particular scale has to offer, what's coming down the pipe for this thing. Um, let me bring this back in the spotlight. Uh, the cat is out of the bag. There is most definitely from Hard Park coming um, an upgrade that will allow you to run carbon fiber shaft extensions that give you enough room to be able to hook up the Fury Tech Springtail motor to this gearbox. Um, I am definitely very excited about that news. I am very much looking forward to building this thing, rebuilding it when those come out. I do have, of course, my concerns and those concerns are number one, the strengths of strengths of the gears, and then number two, the axle shafts in here. If I'm pretty sure that he, if he's going to be extending um, these out in some way, he must be, I would assume, including uh, new axle shafts or an axle shaft that fits all the way through this that, that matches up and, and, and works well just fine. Uh, because my only concern would be that it's it's a soft shaft uh, with soft gears and adding a brushless motor to that whole setup um, could get very fragile very quickly and I just wouldn't want to see uh, or have or experience any issues and it's just something that you know could potentially take place if, if you're not careful so I just happened to notice I've got a loose, loose screw here Always keep an eye out for that stuff. I did not thread lock this because I didn't want this to be thread locked. There's, I go through this quite often and just make sure everything's tight. I usually try and tighten everything after every run, but sometimes you miss something. 
I will say that I did thread lock all of these tiny little screws on this thing because one stripped out right when I first got it. So, but I think that's going to wrap it up. I think I've talked long enough. You're probably sick of hearing me talk. I just want to look at crawlers and I would love to go out and run them right now, but like I said, it's really windy. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the new subs. I appreciate it. So, got some notification up there, like I've reached some 8,000 hours of watch time or something like that. So, stay tuned, folks. Good stuff coming. I will see you on the next one.